Right now we are joining into a match between uh, Power of Mind and Alt, two players from the community. I'm trying to get it up on screen. Give me a sec. Uh, let's see. It must be looking for a window capture. Yeah, this one here. Boom. It should be up on the stream now. And so this is an hour going. They are on turn five. But we'll take stock and analyze and see what, where they're at, what they're playing. And just have some fun with that until I know what I want to do with my life. So, Alt versus Power of Mind. Both at 11 channeling here. That's usually what I look for. And then I look for, well, this guy has a Man of the Hour out. So that means that... Uh, blue is power of mind. So with power of mind is playing the elementalist. The new mage that is in development. Pretty close to done with development, I would say. Pretty solid mage. Very, very strange and different, but cool. And on the other side, we're seeing the old orc. Warlord, the blood wave, indeed. Building a book currently. All right, I mean, if you want to play after that, sure. No rush. Toko Patrol out for the Warlord. He's running a barracks build here with a Battle Forge and a Ballista out and construction out. This is Alt playing this. This is something I would build. He's doing very much like, like either way. I like to play uh, the Orc Warlord and I also run Togo Pizzo so for, for intent and purposes this could be my deck running right here except he, he has a garrison post down pretty early which I don't think I do that in mine but uh, getting it out early he's making three mana on the barracks one on the construction yard one on the battle forge so his channeling right now is what 15 16 with the general signet ring then the construction yard will give him refunds or like uh if some if something dies he will get money mana back for them and also if he destroys enemy conjurations so that's even more mana so like we're looking at 15 plus mana regeneration per round currently for this warlord meanwhile uh the elementalist over here not running the spe specific equipment for the elementalist so i think power mind he's pretty new to the community he's probably playing elementalist i would guess for the first time i i, I played against him uh, his first time playing paladin yesterday so he's like trying new things and uh he's running with uh a battle forge that's one mana then a mana flower two mana and natural pandemonium can give you an amount of mana so it, it gives mana what is it equal to it's four minimum one mana so here he would have saved three and then here he would have saved four mana is it still how that how that works yeah so you get four discount so with that in mind they've made about the same amount of mana in fact kind of the same kind of interesting even with the warlord superior economy the for for the elementalist to keep up mana wise he needs to then keep spawning creatures where the uh, warlord has a spawn point to do that for and the natural pneumonia is not a spawn point so you still have to cast your creatures yourself and then you of course want to trade will but if we look at the melee here it's torgo versus a rock golem and the ice golem and i would think that torgo wins that so this one's melting of course and then ice ring here so he's trying to go for some ice theme which i think is really really like really hard to pull off so he's going a little bit ambitious here first books are going to be bad don't worry man i will criticize you to hell but uh I hopefully you will learn something from it <laughs> no i don't i what's it called like constructive criticism And also if it's another cool thing to look at is of course how many cards per turn you can play so right now the warlord is running with this two cards plus one plus one so four cards per turn 
or actions we could call them and then same oh no the elements list has three so 47 cards in this book here and 51 for power of mind so the elementalist has more spells in his book currently there's a goblin grunt in the discard over here okay i don't think i can look at the discard in detail but there's a goblin grunt already dead oh and the amulet of attunement here has been cast but has been removed by alt so he has dissolved or removed anyway the amulet of a two men which is the mana item i was talking about for the elementalist with that he would be higher and because he didn't have it i thought it would be his first playthrough but he didn't know to bring it good now let's see whether he has put in a copy of it in his book i believe you should put in two amulet of two in your book to have a second one to cast if the first one gets removed because it's such a good item it's two mana for uh five Two mana per turn for five mana. Pretty unique. Hanging out with Sot and everyone last week. Oh, you were at that uh, party. Tell us about it. I mean, I watched the streams, but I wasn't really able to text a lot because I was working. But I listened in. All right, now we're into the round here. Deployment phase. Knight of the Red Helm is deployed for the Warlord. Interesting choice. That one I would not run. But I think I give him not enough credit. He's probably better than, than I think he is. Eight mana. 8 health with 3 armor is really nice. And he's got Psychic Immunity. That's always good. And then he rolls 2 extra dice against the strongest enemy creature. Which can be really hard to achieve. But right now that would be the Ice Golem for example. So then he rolls 5 dice for 8 mana with 3 armor and 8 health. I mean that is pretty good if it's 5 dice. Even 3 dice would be pretty decent. Yeah. He's probably better than I give him credit for. Trying to do some neck exercises here. My neck's been getting a little stiff. Staff of Storms is deployed for the Elementalist. Very cool. I love this. Oh, and he's got a Beam of Frost on the Elemental Wand here with the then the ice ring extra effect okay so he's really going for that frost theme that is that's really really cool and it will work against these living creatures that the warlord is deploying um part of the problem with it is that it um it doesn't work as well against non-living stuff or ethereal in incorporeal so if your whole plan is ice the books tends to fail in certain situations uh, but he's locked into a good scenario here, so maybe he can get some good use out of that. He might have redundancy for this kind for other kinds of scenarios, but who knows? There's tons of fun. Victor Koshed Sharky Puddenhead Farkas Jabez Zud and Stanier. Oh, all the big names. Lots of cake, nice. All the mage wars anyone can handle. Awesome. Oh, I should switch the stream. The game here to board games.
hungry, hungry snakes. Mage Wars. Warlord is affected by freeze. Oh, so he's using it on the Warlord. Um, I think that's a bad move. Because it's gonna... F oh, well, he might make the freeze token stick. Maybe that's the idea. But if he just uh, allows these mil tokens to melt away, then that's not what they're for. If you put it on a creature, it's much more likely that you reach the 10 and actually kill the thing before the freeze tokens melt, melt away. And it bypasses armor, so this would already be 4 damage towards... Uh, killing the Knight Helm, uh, the Knight of the Red Helm here, that would be really good. So I would have preferred to attack either Torgo or... Uh, Tor Torgo has tough minus two, so freezing him is not ideal, but then the Knight of the Red Helm would have been a bit target, I think. But his plan might be to Mage Snipe. It's just gonna be really tricky if the Warlord starts to retreat back in to the base. Uh, while his creatures are here fighting and killing, I uh, just one shot at a. Uh... Wait, what? He he was not the strongest. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. I'm tired, I guess. Yeah, uh, it was the Ballista tagging, not the Knight of the I was focusing so much on him, and then I saw the creature disappear, like, oh, he attacked. Uh, I am streaming your commentary for your game. By the way, it's my face. Just so they are aware. I don't like when we when they're chatting. It's nice too for them to at least know that I am doing the thing. Crumble is being played by. Uh, by Alt onto the Elementalists, so he's removing Staff of Storms. Okay, I would probably have gone for the Elemental Wand. It might get boring, I tend to play slow. Oh. All good. No rush. I tore out of the drapes. Uh oh. How unprofessional of me. Yeah, power of mind. I mean, I hope he takes this with a loving heart, but uh, he's he's one of the slow players in the community. We have a lot of slow players. I'm I'm one of the slow players sometimes, but I when I I can I can switch it up and play real fast. But I've also played like two thousand Mage Wars games, so it's uh it's different when you're new. And I remember I I was always. I guess when I started out, was I a slow player? I don't know. But I became one. Because patience pays off in Mage Wars. And it, it, the old meta uh, was... Uh, uh, allowed or um, favored uh, long game plays much more. So you, you really, you've won tournaments by outlasting. And it still works, but it has been nerfed. So, But in the olden days... That was the the way to do it, and 
just make yourself un unkillable. And then that's it. You won. I still have a hard time figuring out what's the biggest threat at the table. Well, it's always situational, right? Most of the time it's the enemy mage. You never gotta you always gotta keep in mind that the enemy mage can start throwing two boulders. And then ballistas are a a, a good target to remove. General generally. Anything that hits with more than five dice, five or more, is always a threat. For sure. But even three dice can be good. Something that I often notice that new players kind of get wrong is that, or, or fail to see, I suppose, is that uh, a, a melee attack from your mage, for example, uh, is just, even if you roll three dice, that's probably worth four mana, if not five mana. And if you're rolling four dice, that's definitely like six mana. Yeah. If you think of it as an attack spell, Oh, maybe not six, five. But it's the point is you... And then you're not spending mana in the same action. So you're melee attacking with the mages. Sometimes not casting. But you always got to use your action for something. Even if it's just guarding. Guarding can be so good with the mage. Because you can tank a bit with your HP. You do have the, the highest HP pool out of all creatures. So... Victor played slow, but he played really well. He's really good. Is that Power of Mind? Is that the same player? Or Victor, is that someone else? I, I'm, I'm, I'm not so good with uh, all those American guys and their actual names. Uh, I only know their screen names, obviously. Is Victory on Victor E on Discord, right? Yeah, I know of him. I, I don't think I've ever played a game with him. I don't think he plays online at all. If if he does, it's very little. Which is fine. I I mean, good for him that he can find players nearby that, that are willing to play Mage Wars with him. I think it's awesome that you guys have those weekends. 
I knew I know of three three players in on my uh, in my country um, that I am um, that I think might be up for something like that. And that's not really enough to justify like a whole weekend. And none of us have a house to suit that kind of need. Uh, so we don't really have that option. We have a con that we used to go to, um, but they obviously closed down last year because of COVID. Yeah. And I, I guess I haven't checked whether or not they're going to run this year. The con. Go to Jade is here. Power mind says he needs lessons from putting on the frost. That's yeah, that's in plain Neilman says there. Yeah, I think he's not looking at these freeze tokens and like that's wasted, right? Which is bad and unfortunate. Even if it had put it on the knight of the red helm, it would have been down to six HP this round, and then you try to add more freeze tokens to it. Then you're getting somewhere. You might even kill it with the uh beam of frost. So you would probably, let's just say you need probably two beams of frost, right? Because you have the ring. So, yeah, I think one, the first one will apply two priest tokens. Then he's left with, hopefully also roll some crits, but that's not guaranteed, obviously. He has the armor, so you have to go for crits, which should be one crit here. And then one or two, of course. And then, so, um, or you can, I mean, just what? It's, 66% chance of you getting at least one crit, I think is the math-ish, close. And then you add two freeze tokens, next turn he will be left with uh, one freeze token and one damage, so he's got five health and you hit him again, two freeze tokens equal four damage, so you just need one crit again. So yeah, it should be, it should be two beams of frost, then he dies. That's f 10 mana, two actions for one night of red helm, so not the best trade, but you do kill him. With, and if you have it on a wand, you mean you haven't lost anything, so that's nice. It, I like uh, card retention, something that I work a lot with. Uh, you can often see who's winning just by looking at the discard piles. Whoever has the biggest discard pile is most of the time losing. Not if it's like one or two cards that's different, but like double. Not necessarily, but it, it can be an indicator. Because, like, you want to cast stuff like Conjurations and Enchantments and Creatures, stuff that stick around and keep paying off and keep adding value instead of... I mean, crumbling something someone else's investment is uh, fine. Yeah, because then you add it, you're taking away his ability to keep adding value, so that's fine. Stuff storms. I had a deck once that really used it. The old wizard with lightning spells. It was fun. If you look at the stuff of storms, it's wind, lightning, and now frost. Frost isn't being a new addition, but very cool. Uh, but wind and lightning, then it used to be the, the those two, and and if you want pure damage out of the staff, lightning spells. Mana for mana will do more damage. The wind will allow a push usually, so that you can push into a wall, dealing another 3 damage, and that's nice. But lightning also comes with dazes and stuns, and so when you're regularly getting stuns, you that's another kind of advantage that, uh, that becomes really strong. Then frost... Maybe what we would do if we were to make a deck like this would be to, um, you would make a Staff of Storms deck where you can go Lightning or Frost. Have those two specific rings for that. 
so that you, you can go either way and exchange them and you can have a third ring that's fine because you would only need either the ice ring or the lightning ring at any given point probably or you could have them both out and no other ring and then the staff of storms so you can always switch between frost and, and lightning because lightning would be nice against the undead and an incorporeal and then ice ring would be better uh, and ice spells would be better against the living and that might be cool so when that kind of thought process happens we have to open the deck builder and figure out how to do that can we base it off an old deck yes so let me see if i can screen cap that There is no way to make this entirely non-invasive, but so like this, I can build a book while we're looking at a game. Not gonna be a lot of commentary for the game itself then, but whatever. Um, this is an old elementalist. We will save it as Lightning and ice. It already has a Staff of Storms. Elemental Born so kind of is that kind of deck already. No rings. Okay. Yet. <clears throat> then I think this guy was very focused on elementals. We can tone that down. It's always a question whether or not we want the natural pandemonium and the dragon in an elementalist. Oh, we have the natural pandemonium here, huh? Do the swarm type. I think the tide elemental is one of the common ones. This is the one. Go for the one with the Mage Wars final release. Hide alternates. Does that work? Never mind. Ring of Tides. Uh, we can go Ring. Ice Ring. Oh, there's the Wind Ring. Could go Wind. lightning and I don't have any other rings so we just have those two and then three elemental wands mage wand oh I only have one amulet here I think I need two 114 points currently in attack spells oh we have fire here for school air type attack there's the beam of frost lightning jolt is a nice damage bell for Lightning school the same amount of damage as arc lightning, but for one less mana, and that's a big deal. Uh, 
how many points are we looking at? 111 currently. Okay, so we can go for some of the bigger ones. Lightning Bolt. Uh, yeah, there's not that many ice spells, right? So you want to add another frost, I think. That's two. Then there is the idea of a cone of frost. I don't think... It costs the same amount of mana, which is why it's cool. <laughs> no. No point in it. Uh, it's five up on that um, effect roll, and you hit two targets, which is cool, right? So... I did it again. Um, range zero one. Here's yeah, zero one. Ice is really tricky. And it's like if you're going ice, you also want ice elementals. Although, not necessarily. And then there's that wand of ice and fire. But you're gonna be low on actions if you want to be using an elemental wand. We have a battle forge, I hope. Yes, we have a battle forge. In cloud. Okay. I mean, the rest looks fine. Two poison gas clouds is too much. Is it? It's such a good spell. It's good, good against the living, and we have ice. So, 112, okay. Our creatures. He's using ice golems. We even have the wind elemental. What's it's like eight creatures? It could be an iron golem. Iron golems are solid. I'm not trying to make these jokes, I'm trying to avoid them. Uh, I think we will go that route and grab another regrowth belt so we can heal the elementals with our own HP. So, iron. Iron Golem. Hundred and eighteen. Fog Bank. One is nice. Uh, we could do another lightning jolt. Three lightning spells currently. Three acid balls. Huh. Probably change one of those to an edit soul and remove that. Oh. The plugins 17, 117, so I think I'll I want the fourth elemental one and focus hard on that. I'm starting to think in a meditation amulet, but that doesn't work with the amulet of attunement. So, are we missing any leather pieces? Pants. Where's the pants? No, they're here. Gloves, helmet. One point left. Another lizard teleport. All right. He has left his strange mood where he needed to build a book, so we will hide that thing again. And I have not at all been paying attention to what happened in the game. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Uh, Billy. Now let's see what they're doing. 
Torgo Patrol with press the attack now. Okay, so he's in here with the Warlord pressuring the Elementalist. Zero damage on the Elementalist, zero damage or one damage on the Warlord. So that's not what's being attacked. Um, other things have died, obviously. There's a, a nice Golem in the discard. A Crumble still at the top of the discard for Alt. Goddess, we are in deployment. Goddess Strength being deployed on the Warlord. No weapon yet, but he's around rolling five dice. Torko over here is rolling uh, six because of the Presti attack, which also allows him to re roll. Yeah. So that can do a lot of damage. There's no armor on the Elementalist yet, and he skips deployment with two mana on the Battleforge. I'm thinking that should be a leather. Dalian says. Ele tried to want knight and roll one effect. Oh, the elemental. Then Elegal was killed. Oh, elementalist tried to want the knight and roll one effect and one damage. Oh, okay. Damn. Oh, and he's a veteran now. Another enchantment is added to Torko here in the first quick cast phase. Torko is so cool, and he, unlike the other troll, I mean, he could, he's fewer spellbook points. He has less regeneration. The regeneration three of the other troll is the appeal, but he costs one less mana. And he, unlike the other troll, doesn't have a weakness. He doesn't have fire plus two. Instead, he is tough. So. He like I mean the problem with the fire elements or the sorry the fire elements or the 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 bridge trolls is that if the enemy is specialized in fire they just explode. So this guy doesn't have that kind of weakness. In, in fact, he's tough, so he's he's likely to not succumb to all kinds of silly stuff. And you just need to give him some armor somehow is nice, but otherwise he's, he will be do just fine. And a veteran token is a really nice addition. He's just going bare strength though, so he's rolling eight dice. Uh, rolling seven total damage against zero armor, so seven damage going in. He could re-roll that if he has like abundance of mana. I wouldn't. No, he doesn't. Good. Mana too important here, I think. He's just going for the mage, and that makes sense with his no no armor here. I would probably have done the same. Not sure. Maybe killing the ice golem with the with Toko in this turn would have been really nice. You could move over and punch it with the red uh, helm first, see how much damage he does, then punch with the mage, see the damage, and then Toko finishes off with his eight dice. So he, after one of them and gets his veteran token. Now I think that would have been the play. There's an, a new summon coming out from the elemental list. It is a frost elemental. Okay. With two mana left, so we're not going to see the terrain in here this turn. But next turn, I really want to see the terrain. Oh, it's over here. The, fo the frozen hunter is right here. There's also a healing tree here. I see. So why are we fighting here? This is nice having the terrain in the same zone as the healing tree and the garrison post. So we want to now for the elementalist, we want to move the fight over here. Also, and if he doesn't want to fight here, then fine. You, I mean, you can destroy the healing tree and the garrison post. Be happy. And then your elementals will not melt. So the, the ice golem here needs to move over and hit the night realm is what I'm saying. This is this needs to happen. It must be what he's planning. Uh, Elementalist was a warlord attack with basic attack, dealing eight total roll with five dice, so dealing eight damage up to twenty one. <laughs> the Elementalist, the yeah, Ice is moving over. Good stuff. All right. Yeah, just the armor. Yeah, you gotta have the armor, otherwise it, the plan will fail. But the Knight of the Red Helm is attacked by a nice little uh, hit here. He, he takes two damage to criticals. And uh, then the... Uh, oh, he needs to even roll one more. 
because the thousand tundra gives one extra and he only rolled three. Yeah, that's right. The other two will not do anything, but he gained a freeze token. A single freeze token, okay. But it will deal one damage to him in upkeep and not melt. And that's unless he moves out. So he would probably want to move. It's Are they slowed? Require a full action to move out of this zone. Yeah, okay. Nice. It's doing its thing. Problem is, of course, that the mage is dying while this is happening, but the combo has started. That's cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, the Knight of the Red Helm stays. He doesn't get his bonus anymore. You don't lose freeze in my zone. Terrain. This is correct. So he added another freeze token in here. Okay. Maybe the automation removed the freeze token last upkeep while he had the frozen tundra down. Probably. Your mage should have had one less die with me. Melting is not freeze. The freeze rules, not something we see in play that often, so I'm honestly not 100% sure about all these interactions. I tried to make a nice elemental to list, but it is tough. Now the one we just made uh, was without... Oh, he doesn't even have the Fessor Frozen Tundra, so that would cost two spell points to put that in the book. Um, because throwing three tokens down if you don't have the tundra to follow up he seems silly maybe I would like to help these guys, but I'm not 100% sure what the question is, so I'm not going to interfere right now. We'll just let it play out. Still have a game open over on the platform if anyone wants to join in and play. I learned that this game is way over my head still. Play the face. Face melter. Ah. That sucks and it was tough. Yeah. I mean, if you're new, 
it's like it's like playing chess against someone who's been playing chess for years and then you are learning chess for the first time and then you try to win it's gonna be kind of hard now mage wars has a lot i mean compared to chess it's not entirely fair because there's some randomness in mage wars so you can sometimes sometimes you can make a big play and roll the dice and hope to land a blow that the opponent wasn't expecting like a lot of the new players that i play with uh, with they like would just walk fire forward and throw fireballs and since that's not usually the matter sometimes it just works and then they win <laughs> that's kind of fun that's why i always put on plenty of armor so we don't have to deal with all that sudden burst of damage shenanigans Like all this building a nice space here, just having, oh, he's got two armor. Yeah, two armor. I think that's the minimum you should be at at all times. But the problem is most things can remove two armor in like one action. Like most things, rust and acid ball can both remove two armor in one action. So usually you want to have three, but four is the stable point then, because then you can be take at most be taken down to two in one action. So then you're safer. Currently organizing real life Mage Wars collection. Nice. Ah, mine is such a mess. <laughs> ah, yeah. It's been gathering dust. I should find a system for my cards, like some sort of box solution. Well, if um, if Alt can finish the deal and kill Power of Mind, then one of them might want to play. <laughs> that usually happens. the ice frost token stayed but they get removed in the upkeep still they still melt away but they do the damage that they yeah huh i have a question about that So can you for two to remove a frost token before we'll apply damage from Tundra? I'm asking in the Discord right now. There's a rude debate. Because then it's not damage equal to number of frost tokens anymore. Then it's gonna become damage equal to frost tokens minus one because you can always remove one first because you have to do both probably it stops melting but not the removal of a freeze token after acting oh the free ah right it freeze tokens are removed after acting that's what's different right bad different face Oh, she's got my back. All good. Yeah, I don't play with freeze that often, you can tell. So, they get removed after acting. That's what's special, or not special, it's fine. 
Uh, it's just like a different thing. You have to remember that tokens, they, they, I guess because most tokens get, tend to get, no, that's silly. Dace and stun and slam all get removed when you act or something like that. So it's fine. Stagger. Huh. Yeah. Freeze. When you move around a bit, you get free of a, uh, a freeze token. Shake that frost off you. You know it. Six mana on the barracks here. Three on the battle force down here. Lots of mana in store. 21 damage out of 32 health on the elementalist. So she is at what, 11 health currently? And uh, could be grim. Could end this turn. No armor yet, so you would expect this to be an armor piece. And uh, let's see, punch with Torgo, punch with Warlord, eight, five, and uh, this could be a weapon, so six, let's say six dice, eight and six, that's definitely enough. The Knight of the Red Helm only rolls three against the mage, but that's the potential damage. We have two more potential damage and it kills our ranger here, or two more dice. That probably won't be denied, so, and the Berlisa is not ready to fire, okay. And the Elementalist has initiative, so she would move over here do a thing and then one of them will punch her and then the rest will be guarded for so that you don't get hit by both the mage and Torgo. So let's say you are being hit by Torgo. That's bad. He probably, we don't know if he's gonna care about the armor. He's gonna do something to it maybe. Let's say eight damage, put you at 29 out of 32. Or the other way to get around it is to have a creature come over here and guard you. Then you won't get hit. But he's got one, two, three creatures to punch guards. So one of them will be get through the two guards. And that'll be Tor Torgo again, so it doesn't matter. Uh, and then the Kelsar Ranger will shoot. I think the most we can hope for is to dodge the mage. And we want to end up in the frozen tundra over here, right? So you... You move mage over, do a thing with your 13 mana, something that keeps you alive. And then next turn you can maybe even move into the ballista zone or let's teleport yourself in here so not get shot by that. Throw a fireball at it, something like that. And then you're here, you get guarded, the ice golem goes down. Or, or you teleport to the corner. That's also the play, of course. Uh, let's teleport, move up, and then what happens? Then your Frost Elemental will walk in here and fight the Knight of the Red Helm, but these two creatures, if they choose to take the creature fight, they just move over and they slaughter your two Elementals. So I think I think it's over. But it depends on, the, let's see, 13 mana, 14 mana on alt, so he can do something just as bad. And there's a new, new creature coming out for him for, with six extra mana here. Frost could try to kill the Knight of the Red Helm. Move over, shoot him with Beam of Frost and do a thing. Maybe he dies. Then he will punch you with Torgo. Still, but then you guard against the Mage, and the Knight of the Red Helm might die in that scuffle exchange. But he would still probably get a punch. So, yeah. It's over, yeah. How's your game day going? Good. Oh, we got a moth in here. Fun. It's so warm, so I have to keep my door open all night. Elemental staff is played. Very cool play. I love this one. Pay one mana and deactivate a glyph to get a defense. So it's pretty expensive. 
can be worth it. Uh, against eight dice, for example, it is worth it. So yeah, and now he's got a defense against the eight dice. That's a perfect play. Uh, not armor, like I said, but whatever. It's kind of an interesting pick. Could could be perfect. Could be could be real bad. Could be real bad. What was the point for the warlord? A uh, bridge troll came out, and no. So he's mixing bridge trolls and Torgo. Very cool. Torgo for staying power, and then because he's he is better at staying, I think. And then this guy, well, the same amount of dice, but he's cheaper. He's cheaper. That's nice to get him out earlier. Anyway, force push happening here from the elementalist pushing Torgo away. And then he's gonna move over into the bridge trolls zone. Oh, it's the first quick cast phase currently, right? So then Warlord casts a enchantment on himself. Okay, might just be another bear strength to strike harder. Because phase, action phase. And the mentalist must move over here, I think. Right, away from Torgo, that must be the plan. But that's kind of silly. You put down the elemental staff. When you put down the elemental staff, I want him to attack me with Torgo. And hope that that is dodged. Roll the dice. Because now, Torgo will move over and punch the first elemental. And, I mean, he's chunky, but... This guy has got to stay alive. If we want to win this, right? So he should have moved the frost elemental over and attacked the Knight of Red Helm, for example. And then let the mage stay, see if the elemental staff carries him. And then die if he doesn't, if it doesn't. So <laughs> making it a 50 50 roll. But why else put, put it down? Now it's just like four mana that didn't do anything. Now it's going to roll some dice, I guess. He's rolling two damage. He is using a... A beam of frost was used. And then two dice attack. Uh, so he's freezing. Oh, the beam of frost is the attack. Bah. What's happening? I will... One more. So he's still alive by one health. Elementalist. Target elementals with none of him rolling two dice. Oh, because the freeze token, right? If he dies, I can win. He doesn't die, I lose. Well, he's gonna die to the frozen tundra. So he's dead. He dies to tundra. Spoiling it for them, but to raise the mood a bit. Because he did kill it. Ah! Then there's the healing tree. He doesn't. Right, right. Don't forget to remove one frost freeze token after acting. Now we turn to learn this new thing. I'll help them out. You remove two damage. Oh, from the healing tree. Yeah. Took a freeze off. Good. So you want to hit 
inactive creatures. You want to hit inactive creatures so that then they um, they take that extra damage in the tundra and the upkeep phase. At least that that's uh, the idea. Uh, so he moved in and attacked. And what is what was his other action? He force pushed over here. So his main action was moving in here. Yeah, okay. Could have moved over and force pushed as the main action, and then saved the quick cast for after the knife had, that red helm had, had done its thing and he would roll with one more die but then you freeze him and then he's gonna have that extra token in the upkeep phase for the tundra increases your chance of getting the kill shot that way although he did need it in one go for the healing tree but next round it's gonna be easier of course the more damage you deal so it's still looking grim Glyph is super important. Right. I think he's saving it for the elemental staff. But you, you could use it for what? To get more freeze tokens? But he's got the ring. So he freezes on a 3 plus. I probably wouldn't boost that with um, the rune. Glyph. Glyph. Oh, but you could do it on the golem, I suppose. Oh, he's got three plus. Okay, so then here. Frost Elemental. Right. Making this one a three plus would be quite nice. So he, the Kelsar Ranger shot at the Frost Elemental and not at the Mage, or am I wrong? No, an Elementalist, yeah. So the, the, there's being shot, uh, fired at the Elementalist. 26 out of 32. Uh, there's a guard now, which is nice. Um, yeah, that's nice. Uh, he can kill the Knight of the Red Helm now with the Ice Golem if he... I don't know what he needs. He's got one damage and one freeze. So he needs the freeze token. He needs one damage. Yeah, I think it's dead then. Yeah, he's dead. Because he will take two damage now in the upkeep phase and he has four damage he has two so that's six now he is dead but he he rolls one extra die anyway maybe he can kill him earlier because there's still a chance to heal the light of red helm if he can roll some more damage no but he's dead currently Hogo moves and will probably punch the pandemonium. Oh, he double moves. Uh, that may be wise, actually. Uh, he covered another unit. I don't know if they can see the shuffling that I did here. I guess it already moved, so it's kind of fine. Frost Elemental, being attacked basic melee, dealing 5 damage, they never have armor, so he takes all of it, punching back with a total of 6, minus the 2 armor, 4 going in and 2 freezes, there is a brace yourself being revealed, so only 2 damage going in on the Warlord, but two freezes, and he's not gonna lose those freezes. He's gonna stay. Uh, no, no, he's gonna lose the freezes, but he takes damage from them in upkeep. And uh, one more die, right? Because it's five plus one for the frozen tundra. Give uh, your features plus one melee. Add power.
what is it O plus M. Book has zero armor because smart. I was actually, I was, it struck me that since the ice golems and the fossil mentals don't have armor at all, having a high armor on your mage just means that they get attacked instead, and maybe that's not what you want. So maybe that's his idea. He wants to bait uh, attacks into the mage and block them with defenses, for example, uh, so that the like tank with the mage that way. It's not working out, obviously, but it maybe that is the... I don't know if you thought about it that deeply, but maybe it's a thing that you could do, since it's they are, like, very vulnerable too. You don't really want these guys to be punched too much. They are relatively cheap for how much HP they have. I don't really know what the strategy is with them. You can never... You can heal them. You can heal them with your mage, because you're the elementalist and have that special armor. But when you do that, you want to do it with something that has armor themselves, so you don't... Because this this is just HP, they, the HP is not guarded, so it's less valuable, like compared to life bonding with a an iron golem. It takes much less damage, much easier to heal up. So but what, in, what, what do you do with the frost elemental then? You kind of throw them out there, and then you expect them to die. You have to base your strategy around expecting the your forces to literally melt uh, away before your eyes and then you're supposed to uh, kill enough with them before that happens and they potentially do a ton of damage with the freezes in the tundra uh, this is the best case scenario for him maybe there will be he needs 15 mana another frost elemental being summoned this turn but then, I mean, he gets just punched to smithereens. He's at six health. So, the problem is the forward pandemonium, maybe. Maybe that is the problem. Maybe the problem is the tundra here. I think if we were fighting here, that would be better for elementalist. Um, and then you could have retreated back with the mage a bit. But then again, then the the golems get hit. And you don't want that, so... You want elemental armor emo and transfer damage to the elemental because he has so much HP. Oh, oh, yeah, that's clever. I like that way more. Yeah, just use them as an HP pool for yourself. Because they're so cheap. Uh, so, there's a math equation that needs to be done here. But what if you, with Frozen Tundra, play that in the corner, and then and a Frost Elemental into that zone. And now every turn you can life bond just to that thing and it'll, it'll, it won't melt. <laughs> so then that's 23 HP for 15 mana no 8 plus 15 and let's be real it doesn't happen twice is, is the exchange rate better here 8 for 13 15 for 23 uh huh I feel like the Ice Golem is slightly more efficient. So you would go Ice Golem, Frozen Tundra, that's 16 mana. But then you get 13 health transfer to your mage. 16 mana for 13 a region. And then if you have region and you start to overflow, you can use it as like a bank for damage, and then you just transfer some damage back in that turn where you only have your region, and then the Ice Golem would heal. So you have it as like a battery standing in the corner for 16 mana. Then the, the next one, the thing is that when the first one dies, you can cast another and send it to the corner. And then 
he sits to just does the same for now 24 mana but then you've got 26 health coming in total as kind of like a, a druid tree thing where you just have a thing that constantly heals you for for two or life bonds away i'm just wondering if it's worth it 16 is kind of expensive for that little combo and it has a limiter on it it's not inf infinite you can't ever really heal the ice golem uh, any other way so once you spend up those 13 hit points it's uh it's going to die so i would probably let it sit at 12 in the corner until i can either shift damage the other way or need the final one for something for that's an important turn with extra health and then maybe if someone comes down here they could punch him with one health that's fine just to see if you can 16 mana for that it's insane so it obviously doesn't work but maybe that's what putin was doing okay yeah look them at look at them as like uh, HP batteries and then you just gotta keep deploying them. You get Ice Golems for 4 mana. So you can put out 4 of these. And that's a lot of HP to transfer to yourself and you can put down Frozen Tundras. The problem is when you start to overcommit on the ice, like I said before, then you meet a Necromancer or like a, another Elementalist running Ethereal in real stuff and then your Freezes do nothing. And the Tundra will do nothing except make your creatures not melt, so it's still important. You still have to play this thing. Uh, and I guess it does give you extra dice. So it's actually it's much better than you think, because you get extra damage out of it for 8. Yeah, it's actually really good. So it's like, you want this combo, but you will get slaughtered by... But maybe you just think of them as... I can't, I mean, they roll decent dice, I guess. But I guess an incorporeal. They won't trade super well, is the problem. And uh, you can just siphon the HP to yourself. So maybe you even guard them with your mage when you're not summoning. And stay in the same zone with this frozen chandra, which I don't think is a problem. Corporeal non-frost creatures require full action to move out of the zone. So that includes your mage, your uh, golems are free of it, and incorporeal do not care either. So there's another advantage for the incorporeal of the deck. And then solo mages. Solo mages, you might actually do well against those, as long as you can fight... I mean, as, soon as, as soon as you got, start stacking like five freezes on a person, it becomes really dangerous. So you then you drop a tundra underneath them in one turn, and and just well, maybe even tangle wind them in a frozen tundra zone, something like that, could be kind of cool. about to be done with the base. Oh, he's healing with the water rune, right? Water glyph. Water, during the upkeep phase, you may pay two mana to heal two damage. Yeah. So if you play water spells, you have healing too, which is kind of cool. I like being the water elementalist. For that reason, because I do like my healing. The earth is interesting until the end of the round do extra armor during the upkeep during the upkeep phase okay so you have to pay pre for the round i think i am underestimating that that's i should use that more in general you just want to throw out as many elemental spells as you can as the elementalist and dual school spells are best not or you go you want to find a few of those that are comboing them to get two glyphs at once it's worth like two extra mana per so the more you get the better 
for those dual schools. I'm looking at my own elementals now, as you know, if I even have any, or I'm just talking shit. One. I have the healing tree. Oh, we got the rain cloud too, so that's two. And all the attack spells are or yeah. Tar trap. Did what did they do with tar trap? Let's have a look at that. Tar trap. Look at what they don't do, my boy. Can I enlarge this? Yes. Dissipate to you must reveal tar trap when this creature activates. The creature cannot take non-spell actions. Oh, this is the old one. And then we have the new one here. Let me see. So the new tar trap. Dissipate 2 still. You must reveal tar trap when this creature activates. This creature is restrained. Against the flame plus one trait. Uncontainable creatures are immune. Yeah. Okay. A restrained being the thing. So before you... Let's see if I... To hammer that into my own skull here. The old one, the, the thing about that was that um, creatures cannot take non spell action. So they couldn't guard, they couldn't meditate with a meditation amulet, uh, they couldn't do all the other little shen shenanigans that you might do. You couldn't punch, you cannot take non spell actions. Yes, yeah, so you couldn't, you couldn't melee attack either. Okay, right. So that's a big thing. So, but now you can. You are just restrained. You, it's an enchantment, but it goes away after two rounds. Okay. Big deal, big deal. We well, you know that you are a shit talker, Geech. Okay. Wow. I'm hurt. Oh. The game ended. Uh, I didn't see one. Oh, GG. Uh, who won? <laughs> Let's guess. What do I need to see? Uh, all the showing us a book here. View deck. Okay. This is a freeze deck. Oh, this is the freeze deck that we just saw in play, I suppose. Oh, mind. See how bad this is. Yeah, that's bad. You you don't want deep freeze. You can take one deep freeze, I think. But I don't think you should. You should take another Tundra instead. Tundras are the ways to go, not the deep freeze. Yeah. Oh, freeze conditions are not removed. Uh, to use on enemy creatures. For that, maybe. One. Put one in deck. I don't know if Power of Mind is listening in. Join the stream. If you want to hear. Uh, if you want to hear. But, um... Four Ice Guns, I think that's good. Two Frost Elementals, yes. Oh, here's the Elemental Drake. Yes, that makes sense. Okay, I think I like that. And uh, him, though, the thing about him is that he's going to die, uh, or you can try to just not keep care about keeping him alive, and he is kind of hard to kill. 12 health, 2 armor. You have to give him a glyph. So you have to think about what that needs to be. Also alternative. That's on my way, okay. Snowstorm. Oh, this is the one I keep forgetting about. Snowstorm. Only water. Frost spells in this zone remove two... Frost objects in this zone remove two damage on Roland. Right, this is the heal spell. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's obviously really cool. Again, 
The freeze only really works against living. So against the incorporeals, we are going to have a problem. We know, do we have a backup plan for incorporeals? There's the jet stream. These needs to go. Or do I need to give it a chance? It's, um, why would you cast this? Blame against freeze weapon roster. If you got them locked down in a tundra zone, let me read the tundra zone again. Non frost objects in this zone gain blah blah blah, all copper real blah 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 during the upkeep phase. All objects in this zone lose the melting extrait. Okay, so if you're in the Tantra, when then it won't melt, and they would have to attack this thing in order to get rid of it. Yes, uh, but it has to be a minor weapon or a shield equipment. The problem then is that you can, if they have a battle forge, they can deploy another weapon on top of it, and I'm pretty sure the freeze weapon would just go to the discard pile while their weapon would go back into the deck. So it's cool, but it's very, very situational. This would be much better in domination mode, stuff like this, uh, but not in arena play, I think. Maybe in academy too, probably also better in academy. Frost Trap is... Uh, Place two freeze conditions on this creature. Okay, for six. And if they are in a Tundra zone, that's two damage. No, it's one damage because they remove one of them after they're done acting. I don't like this one. I can, again, one. Uh, by the way, Keys, it was one of your streams videos that inspired me to give the Barracks Warlord a shot. Still learning, but I like, yeah, yours was a lot like mine. And I like the Knight of the Red Helm. I, I don't like paying three spellable points for him, but I like I, I can I, I think I sort of talk myself into why you would play him. I would probably put one in my Paladin books going forward, at least. Oh, you have the one of the Ice and Fire. That's nice, yeah. I wish you could heal... Uh, ice elementals with this that would be really cool if you could like point and the same with fire elementals like point at them and like stoke their fire or like increase the ice that would be such a niche thing for this thing just one health maybe per per cast but that could be really cool ice ring staff of storms extinguish Remove the extinguish. You have the rain cloud, and the rain cloud is such a solid play. And you, you play that early, pays off, and then you can save the spell point. I think dissolves, of course. Rapid dismantle, nice meltdown. Okay, I don't think you can run single meltdown. Maybe for the threat of it, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Don't don't take my word for that. Probably fine. Ice spikes, right? They are also really cool. Yeah. The problem is that the the whole thing takes a lot of actions and a lot of mana to set up. So what can we do? We need more mana. Or an election generator. We have the Battle Forge already. That's spending mana towards the ice combo, unfortunately. That could go to, for, towards the ice combo. Is there another, another. There's no other spawn point for the Elementalist, I think. Yeah, an action generators. I think we have any. Natural Pandemonium is a lot of mana. Move Battle Forge and then a mana thing. You have a mana flower, yeah. The mana flower. And then I think we play Pandemonium. Then we can then you want to use the Pandemonium. So I think the Rock Golem maybe. Because you don't want melting. And then next turn I would play Tundra and an Ice Golem. 
to set it up here. And then the idea would be you establish one zone where the opponent does not want to be because of all your ice stuff. And then you can move and put a, a tundra somewhere within range two at least, and then move all your stuff there. I think that could work. Then you would want a third tundra in your deck probably. If we are relying this heavily on it, you need you need that stuff to, to keep your stuff alive. You can put a deep freeze. I think the deep freezes are for putting on enemies, honestly. Uh, yeah. Freeze conditions are not removed. So then you can stack it on. And once they're running around with freeze tokens from this, and and uh, and then you just drop a tundra underneath them, that you may do six damage in a turn or something like that, and then they're already counting as twelve. Uh, then I understand why well, you would want several, but mm. then you gotta use them at least. If you have four, it's like you the first time you have any opportunity, you put one down and reveal it, and hope they remove it, because then you do the next, and that's the idea by having multiples. Otherwise, I don't see. I would need that many. Reverse magic. And nullifies. Okay. Reverse magic is so specific. In its usage. I would ask. Yeah, I don't know if Alt is listening. I think he is. Um, this is power of mind. I don't know if he's listening. But I would want to hear what the idea is behind the reverse magic. Because there has to be a specific scenario. We are, they say, okay. But now, I mean, it's kind of sad now that you're showing the deck. I've actually, my new deck that I haven't actually showed or revealed it at the end of the game because you sound up, sometimes you lose out of some tricks. So people watching now will maybe think. At least think of the reverse magic, but then you remove it and then subvert expectations. Reversing curses. All right, every book has to think about facing curses, obviously. So let's see. Dispel, seeking dispel. I would change something in here to a remove curse, probably a seeking dispel. Uh, you don't have anything like purify, so but you don't care about weak tokens, I think. Yeah, you don't care about weak tokens, so you are worried about rot. Can you get rid of rot in any fa form or fashion? Negative, you cannot. Uh, so that's something to watch out for. Not getting rid of rot tokens. At least some two spell points or three spell points will probably be dedicated to. A spell that can do that it is nice. That could be a purify, so that's also for curses. I'm loving the snowstorms. I think even you can run three and just spam them. Uh, as long as there's two golems in the same zone that are hurt, where you get four healing out of the snowstorm, then you're doing. And even if you're just hitting one enemy. You're dealing... Oh, it's six of freeze, okay. Oh, but you have your ring. You have your ring. Uh, let's see the ring. Mage as for all attacks makes for the first damage. All of them receive the bonus, yeah. So three up and eight up for two freeze on everything in the zone. And you heal your own creatures. So if you hit... Let's say three targets then. Three targets, either three enemy creatures or one, two enemy creatures or one of your own. But he healing them is good value. As long as you you gotta be hitting an enemy, you shouldn't, you shouldn't use it just when you have like two guys standing around. If you have four wounded guys standing in the same zone, you can drop a snowstorm, I think, for the healing. Do you think that I should drop any elementals or golems? No, I think this is honestly really this is the concept for me right now we're looking at is the you have you max out ice golems because you get them cheap with the natural pandemonium and then you have two frost elementals and the elemental drink for support and i like some rock golems in here because they cost nothing this is exactly what you want at least that's what i'm thinking that you're trying to do just go frost
But not, I mean, now you face someone played living creatures and that, that can work. This book has nothing if you face a uh, necromancer. Um, but, but, but non frost options is old, not copper real, non frost. Required. During the upkeep phase, in this zone, takes direct damage equal to number of free zones. On. Oh, this can damage non living. Hold up. The frozen tundra can damage non living targets with free tokens. So, still not in corporeal. Uh, so, if you're facing a, another elementalist who's using fire elementals, uh, you don't even have a water spell here. Did we have a Staff of Storms? Only one Staff of Storms. Okay, but uh, you could include a lightning spell. Anyway, what was I saying? Right, we are thinking about Tundra can damage non-living. Frost Trap could then do two damage. I still think that the Frost Traps needs to be removed. They, I mean, you can have one. They cost one air and one water. They cost two spell points. No. They gotta go. You can keep one. Hmm. Water, Vice, and Fire is really nice. But you won't have actions for it, I think. So, one. And I don't think they get removed anyway, so. Probably not a priority. Uh, yeah. Where's the. Oh, it's here. Elemental Mail. Haven't bothered using reverse magic yet. Oh, so I found that when I got good at the game, and then when I knew my opponents really well, like uh, I had that one guy that I played with uh, in in my hometown for a few years, we knew each other really well. And so then I started to at one point slip uh, uh, reverse magic in, where I sort of expected him to do certain things, and then once you can use that to kind of outplay. It's very, like, you have that very specific use of it. And if there's so many ways that it can go wrong and that it just fizzles and does nothing and it's so expensive. So you gotta use it sparingly. But you can add, uh, it's a fun card to take in and out of decks. Once your opponent knows that, okay, he has a reverse magic in this deck, he's, they start to play differently. So then you take it out and then do something else. And then they're worried about the reverse magic. And then you, once they feel safe, you've got to slip it back in during a match or something and stuff like that. That's how you use cards like reverse magic. The drop reverse magic to reverse attack. That's way easier to use for sure. And uh, a fantastic spell. It, like a reverse attack can win games, but it also, again, it, you could just end up getting no value at all out of it but you either feel like you've you, you've got to think about whether or not you actually want to spend the mana once it comes around to to do the attack uh i think a mistake made with reverse attack and reverse magic is sometimes that people think well now they, they threw a two die attack into your your reverse attack maybe you shouldn't even pay for the for the thing and it just goes in it's, it's, it's then it will still hit the target obviously but Maybe that's fine, and then you don't waste your mana on a two die attack. Same with the reverse magic. You have to this reverse magic has way more situations where you end up being like, well, I don't want to pay the mana now because that's useless. What should my opening be? T one amulet, pandemonium. Um. Hmm. I don't think you should ever play Pandemonium turn one. You play Pandemonium when you summon your first creature. So you could cast Pandemonium and then you could cast your creature. You don't show the Pandemonium before you know where it is supposed to be and what they've done in the first round, stuff like that. Unless you want it here. You can... Could Pandemonium be cast in the corner? No. 
you're there. You need that extra mana. I think it is right to fight for the center zone. And that's why I think you need an extra Tundra in the book to just always put underneath the Pandemonium. Just start with Pandemonium, Tundra underneath, and then start filling it with as much ice as you can. All, kind of, all the ice stuff. And put in your ice garden, put in an ice spikes, and then, or whatever, not the ice spikes. But then when then they do, they're not going to want to come in. And so when you're ready, you have three or four golems and you are not being attacked by ranged attacks or whatever. You build up as much as you can and then you sort of move and cast a Tundra somewhere and then you move your whole army over. <laughs> Something like that. You could even use a force wave to do like uh, extra getting to extra distance for a turn, like send your whole uh, wave ahead. That would be kind of cool. Because it costs three spell points, not worth it. But yeah. Uh, teleports, yeah. You, you, so then you you could the other thing you could do if you don't want to move out is you, you can do the old uh, teleport steely trick where you summon the an enemy mage to your uh, now um, build up zone where you, they don't want to be, and then you murder them. Which I think the ice would be perfect for, especially in a tundra where they then follow up and take a ton of damage. But then you need teleports. You have one currently, and you need nullifies, which you have, and you need a jinx is nice. And a tangle wine. Um, you have no tangle wine, so I suggest a tar trap then. Tar trap obviously is a bit of a pick. Could be a really nice combo with that. Did they make it um, unique or epic or something like that? No, you can still spam tar traps. Okay, so. I think you might want at least one tar trap. I know it doesn't give you the fire extra, but being able to restrain them in a tundra in a, in a two, for two turns should be enough to the point where they would need to spend more mana and more actions to get away, right? And you need to have a, and then they're gonna try to teleport out. So you gotta be ready with either nullifies or uh, jinxes or uh, you know, the teleport to teleport them back. Best to get the nullify in, obviously. So, but that's more actions from your mage. Meanwhile, you want to spend, what, six rounds casting elementals, right? So <laughs> it's it's really tricky to pull off because you won't get more than three elementals probably. And uh, then what? It's tricky. And what do we do with the Elemental Drake? I'm not even sure this one should be in the deck, I'll be honest. But with this ex extra actions. Uh, when it ca is cast, place one glyph from your mage onto it. Your mage, and you know, so you can activate and deactivate that glyph in the same manner as if it were on the Elemental to gain its effect. Oh, both mage and the Drake can use the glyph while it's on the Drake. Oh, really? Elemental Drake can cast non-creature spells from the same school as that glyph. So your mage can still use the glyph. So there's nothing wrong with giving it, say, the water gem, the water glyph. So then the drake can heal. Huh. And it can activate it too. Or do you have more air than water? No, water would also allow to uh, dissolve. I think I would go water. Hmm, I'm starting to like that now. It's it, uh, what's it called? It's uh, elemental. And do, 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 you get discount on the dragon, really? Well, um, let's see. Move, battle forge, mana flower then pandemonium dragon can you afford that move battle forge mana flowers 13 or 7 then you get 11 
So 18. Natural Pandemonium Dragon. You cannot afford that. So you will go to go Natural Pandemonium Rock Golem. But now we're delaying the ice even more because then I want to go Rock Golem. The next turn. I don't know, man. Wait, he, you said the thing before the, about the corner. Ice Golem and Frozen Tundra for the Elemental Mail. Keep one copy of Deep Freeze and save a Tundra. And save a Tundra. You gotta have more Tundras. You need, to, you know, I think, three, three or four Tundras in this deck here. Specifically, like it, it works on all the melting stuff, like these ice spikes. Cast a tundra in the corner with a golem. Oh, yeah, that that was like a joke. <laughs> um, just I don't know if you were part of my uh, for the life bond. Mm -hmm. Just use them as HP batteries. I I was just thinking about whether or not it would be worth it, and I don't think it is, but it could be kind of fun, and it might work. Um, it wouldn't, I mean, it would be good. It would be good, but is it worth 16 mana and two actions? And that, I think, no, probably not. Plus, you know, not even that. You have to summon the golem in here and cast the tundra underneath it so it doesn't melt. And then when you want to move from there, you have to spend a full action. So it's two full actions and a quick cast to do that and then move out. Otherwise, you should you could use the deep freeze. Deep freeze would be cheaper. The difference is that it, uh, maybe the deep freeze is just the option. You know, you take it. So this is just a, another dip concept, but whatever. Ice Golem Summon, deep freeze played on it. Now you have 13 HP extra for your mage, and then you just run a, run that away from your opponent at all times. <laughs> or do whatever with it, whatever you want with the Ice Golem. But it doesn't have to move forward, it's your HP battery, and it wants to hang back. That could be like an opening strategy. For 8 plus what, 4, right? And that, that may be good. Not in this deck, I wouldn't do it in this deck, because here they have a different role. But as like in any other Elementalist kind of thing, you just put down an Ice Golem with a deep freeze on it for 12 mana you have this ma hp battery that's kind of cool and then you go solo mage but for 12 mana the thing is in, in a pinch the elemental could then move around and attack stuff right like skirt around the edge of the map and maybe attack a mana flower or something That could be fun. Why have I, not, when we're just looking at the deck, I could have enlarged the cards a bit. Probably versus aggressive books. The reason why I like the Tundra for it is because then you can have multiple ice golems and then once the first one is spent by you draining all its HP, you can send the next one down into the Tundra. But that's probably, I mean, that's ludicrous. So you might as well just commit to doing it once with an Ice Golem, deep freeze it, and then uh, put it on ice, and then use it later for HP with life bonding. That's really cool. Cool, but not worth 12 mana. So you gotta be doing something else that's really special to make up for the mana lost or the, the investment you've spent on that. If the opponent is building a base meanwhile, like having that extra two region, which has a time limit on it, right? It doesn't work forever. So, yeah. You would want region two also, so that you can, once you have heal, fully healed and the opponent realizes that it's, it's uh, not valuable to strike you anymore, then you start transferring damage back from the Ice Golem, healing it back up for the next surge of damage so you can start applying damage whenever you regenerate. 
And that way you like keep it alive and, and going. So I think you need to combo it with having region two. Or any kind of other healing, passive healing. Alright. No one wants to play. Still have a game open. I got about two hours more. Before I gotta go. Would I drop Elemental Staff? No, I like that one. I mean, is it good? It makes your... It gives you an extra die on your melee attack for four mana. That's fine. And um, then it has this effect which costs you glyphs. But it it's fine. I mean, it's not like super good. It's, it's a decent item for what it does. Uh, for four mana. Rolling an extra die, load. You, you gotta take it because you want a melee attack with your mage at some point, late in the game, maybe. It's like a very late game play. Uh, there needs to be some leather in here. Yeah, we need some leather. Gotta leather it up. Uh, on the mage. Stat sheet. What does the level mean? Like level 3 water, level 2 holy or something. So that means that when you are putting cards into your book, you if you have 3 water, then when you uh, add a level 1 water spell, you pay 1 water, one spell point for it. And if it's level 4, you are no longer trained in it. So it counts as, as if, if it were nature, whatever. It's like double. So if you can take level 3 spells... Um, Tide Elemental, for example, into your book for when you have Water 3, and it would cost 3 spellable points. If you had Water 2, level 2 training, you would pay 6 for it. I hope that answered your question. has a Discord channel. I didn't know. I am now a part of it. Uh, trained in level 1, level 2, and 3 in water. Level 1 and 2. Ah, oh, he's explaining, yeah. Thanks. I mean, sometimes it gets a little messy when I explain something and I miss out on an important point, so... Five points, okay. I like uh, the bottom line, uh, the idea happening here. I just, I, I keep coming back to it. it's just it, you, you will have some matchups where you just lose because there was nothing you could do. But maybe I was a little bit too harsh on it because of the, the Tundra. Tundra being able to um, damage non-living could be the thing that changes it around. That's gonna be your play then. But you can still just, oh, you can always go for the mage. Uh, but some mages will protect themselves and then you uh, deny that. So you gotta, unless you can be like, 
have the most teleports and the most uh, nullifies and the most, but you can't as elementalist. So that's like yeah, a wizard will be able to escape your grasp with his teleporty stuff if he brought some of that. And so you got a safeguard. Other ways. <laughs> 